Mike Picelli here. Thanks for tuning in. I'll be talking about the Beatles recording of Across the Universe that they did in February of 1968. The song was written entirely by John Lennon at his Kenwood home in 1967, and it's kind of a mixture of Indian and folk music with a number of uh, time signature changes. The cosmic direction of the song is probably because of the recent influence of the uh, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi Bear, uh, whom John studied transcendental meditation with. Uh, and about the song, John has said, I was lying next to my first wife in bed, and I was irritated. She must have been going on and on about something, and she'd gone to sleep, and I'd kept hearing these words over and over, flowing like an endless stream. I went downstairs and wrote the lyrics first, and then sang it. It's one of the best lyrics I've written. In fact, it could be the best. I don't know where it came from, what meter it's in. Such an extraordinary meter, and I can never repeat it. It's not a matter of craftsmanship. It wrote itself. On February 4th, 1968, John brought the song in wanting it to be the next single, but the band was not really interested in recording it. They did try it a number of ways, though, with John singing live and John and Paul both playing acoustic guitars and George and Ringo playing various instruments like the tambora, sitar, sphere mondale, and even overdubbing some backwards bass guitar. But the final version had John on acoustic guitar, Ringo on drums, and George on tambora. Spike Milligan, the writer, comedian, and musician, was at the session, and he suggested that the song would be perfect for a charity album he was organizing for the World Wildlife Fund, and the Beatles agreed. There's been many versions of this song released, but except for the Anthology 2 outtake, any recordings um, you heard comes from the one master that was made on February 4th, 1968. Now on February 7th, overdubs were attempted, and the rhythm track was actually slowed down for John to sing it and for him to sound higher pitch uh, when the tape was played back at normal speed. For the background vocals, Paul had the idea to bring in some, uh, some girls from outside who were always waiting around Abbey Road to sing the high parts on Nothing's Going to Change My World. And those girls were 16-year-old Lizzie Bravo and 17-year-old Gaylene Pease, and they appeared on the World Wildlife recording of the song. On February 8th, the Beatles are back at EMI Studio 2, and now John wants all the backward recordings removed, and he also adds Mellotron and he plays some wah-wah guitar. Plus, John re-records his lead vocal many, many times until he's satisfied. And fun facts to know and tell, they worked on the song quite extensively back in January of 69 at Twickenham, but it's the original recording back in February of 68 that was used on the various masters. About the recording, John has said, It wasn't a very good recording. It's a lousy track of a great song. It was a shame because I liked the song, but nobody was interested in doing the tune originally. Nobody was supporting me or helping me with it. I was so disappointed by it. The Beatles didn't make a good record of it. Later that month, Glenn Johns mixed the session with everything being treated to flanging and artificial double tracking. That version was bootleg but never released. Then on April 1st, 1970, at EMI Studio One, Phil Spector took uh, take eight from one of those February sessions, and he added 50 musicians and vocalists to butcher the song with a score that Richard Hewson arranged, and added way too much echo to try and get his wall of sound thingy. It ended up sounding like a glitzy Hollywood production with Disney strings and lullaby voices. I think it's hideous. But unfortunately, this is the version that most people are familiar with. And that was mixed on April 2nd, and the track was slowed down from the key of D to D flat. Luckily, in 2003, Paul McCartney stripped the recording and released it on the Let It Be Naked LP. And I'm basing my lesson with a few extras on that album. Across the Universe was released on the Let It Be album on May 18th, 1970. So that's the backstory. Let's get started. John Lennon is playing a Martin D28 on Across the Universe. This is a Taylor 814C, and I have it going through some double tracking, flanging, and a plate reverb to try and get the tone. So at the very beginning, that uh, iconic intro, it's only three bars, but I think to really understand it, first see it in, in a chord fashion. And, and it would be like a D chord here, to a D chord up here, to an A, a G, an A, add six, F sharp minor, and then A. 
but he only plays on the first and third string. So he plays the first and third string of that D form. Then an open D. Slides that all the way up to the second D form. It's another D. And then the A, G, A. Add the sixth. Then the F sharp minor. And when he puts the B in there, it's kind of making it like an F sharp minor 11. And then the A, he adds the B again. It's kind of like a A9, I guess, or A2. So very slowly, it sounds like this. And we're off to the verses. Now, the temptation could have been to just do up and down strumming, but that's not John Lennon. This is such a complicated rhythm uh, part. So you're going to need these chords. You'll need a D, a B minor, F sharp minor, E minor 7, a regular A, an A7, and on the eighth measure, I think it is, you'll need a G minor like this. Now, in the first four measures, the first three are in 4-4, four, four, and measure four is in 5-4, five, so there's five beats in that measure. And again, it's not just down-up strumming, it's very complicated strumming, actually. He plays this, he goes, um... Of note is that measure uh, four of the A, it's one and two E and a three E and a four and five and very slowly that that uh, fourth measure. Now in the end of the second uh, four measures, or is it five? One, two, three, four, or fifth measure is a measure of two instead of that measure of five, and those go like this. Um, And then on the last end of two of the two four measures, kind of just a muted thing. Okay? So then we're at the first pre-chorus. And on the pre-chorus, it's just D strum down up, just uh, uh, the first uh, two and a half, one and a half measures. Simple down up like... Okay? That uh, third beat of the second measure of the pre-chorus is all strummed down and then there's a, you know, muted before it gets to the A and then A7. And there's a lot of open strings where he's moving to the chord. So that pre-chorus is like this. Then we're to the very first chorus. Now you'll need a slightly different A, an A like this. To an A7 suspended. And you'll need a regular first position G. And the second part of it, we're gonna use a G with a flat five, an odd voicing where he adds a C sharp to a G, like. And that only happens on the very first chorus. And slowly the first chorus sounds like this. Um. Now the second part of it is again, it's that same A, but all, even though it's eighth notes, strum all down. Then an A7 suspended. Open to A7. 
a G chord in eighth notes, all strummed down. And then that uh, with a flat five in there. And I think he just plays up to the C sharp, it's more, more like, I'm sorry, all down. Sounds odd, but that's what he did um, to the D. So the whole chorus, first chorus, sounds like this. On verse two, John continues with some very creative uh, strumming, basically the same chords, but completely different rhythms. It starts off like this. Um. And you hear that 5-4 measure in the, uh, was in the 8th measure this time. And that 5-4 measure is 1-E-N um, to 2-E-N, 3-E-N to 4-E-N, 5-N. So very slowly that 5-4 measure goes. <laughs> very inventive. So I'll do that very slowly, the whole verse, verse 2. And then we're at the pre-chorus, uh, number two, which is exactly the same as the first one. This is just, um... <laughs> Chorus two, slightly different rhythm variations. Again, starting with the A like this. On verse three, he repeats a few motifs. So at the beginning is like this. Um. Just like John to have a motif and then change it a little bit. Now on this verse three, measure four is in two four. Okay. So uh, that first four measures is like this, nice and slow. Continuing on, all next four measures are in 4-4. Four, four. And then we're at to the pre-chorus, which is the same as the other ones. And then the final chorus out. The only difference on this one is um, 
He doesn't do the A suspended seven. He plays just a regular A seven on the on the second chord. So he goes. On the end where mere mortals would just probably pound hard on the eighth note off the D chord, John varies the rhythm quite extensively like this. He plays um As you can see, John's rhythm part is anything but simple. Charts and tabs are available for you to download at MikePacelli.com, and that'll make his part even clearer. But that's what John played on Across the Universe. I wanted to take just a moment to talk about John Lennon's wah-wah guitar parts on the song. Um, there's really nothing distinctive that we have to uh, get exactly right, but just so you understand uh, what he was doing. Uh, he has his casino plugged into a Wawa pedal and probably into a Fender amp, just nice and clean. And when he plays a chord, maybe he'll play a, a little triad of a G chord, he'll move the Wawa pedal down in eighth notes along with the beat. So something like... Maybe on the D chord... You know what I mean? Um, and so he like, oh, nothing's gonna, nothing's gonna change my world. He'd play um, like an A triad. And then maybe over here in the D. Nothing's gonna change. And he also likes uh, up in this form, this D. I'm gonna change my. Just mess around with notes. He also gets up a high up here on this D form, you know, so like uh, one. Stuff like that. So I only mention it because I use it in my sound alike, which I have created. Um, so I took parts uh, from a, a number of different versions, but it's basically it's the uh, you know John Lennon's rhythm part, along with a few of these uh, Wawa parts. Then I had my wife sing the the, the background parts, and uh, of course I did the drums and I used the uh, dulcimer for a droning effect and put some synth in there and just anyhow this is how I think the naked version should have went. So have a look at this. Rain into a paper cup They slither wildly As they slip away Across the universe Flows of sorrow Waves of joy Are drifting through my open mind Possessing and caressing me
they tumble blindly as they make their way across the universe. Well, now you see how John Lennon's rhythm part could have driven the song just perfectly if they would have mixed it up front. If you'd like to drop me a line, do so at MikePacelli.com. That's where the charts for this song and all my video lessons are available for you to download, and I appreciate your consideration in supporting my work that way. So have fun playing this great old song, and until next time, I'm Mike Pacelli. Thanks for hanging out with me. Yeah.